And we are live and in living color. Welcome to another fantastic episode of This Week in Reselling, where we interview special guests each and every week from different walks of life in the reselling world. Here we'll discuss the highs and lows of reselling and dive into great conversation. We're positive you're going to hear something that's going to help you become a better reseller. I'm your host, Ray, and I'm not joined by my co-host, Dustin. He's still MIA. We got to find him. He's been missing. He's been missing. We've been missing Dustin. And But guys, today is an awesome day because we have an amazing guest for you. We have none other, the elusive, I think elusive, is ABC Matt. How's Hi it guys. going, Matt? Going well. Thank you for having me. Dude, I am super excited. I know before we you know, started this, I'm like, I don't think enough people know about Matt and I find you super interesting and we just need to get to know the man behind because I see the logos and the social media comments and the, the hearts and all that. But I'm like, I want to know about Matt. Like, let's <laughs> talk about Matt. And I know that you, uh, you, before we got started here, you said you're from, you currently live in Portland, Oregon. Correct. Currently live in Portland, Oregon, which is, I don't know anybody from Portland, Oregon. So I think it's like a whole nother country out there completely. It feels like it. Does it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I feel like I'm in an island with there's no YouTube resellers and I'm there by myself. Oh, that's interesting. So, Matt, okay. So, before we came on here, you kind of said that you're not a full time reseller and you're not like a part time reseller. You consider yourself yep. more of a hobbyist reseller, which this yep. is breaking news. We've never really had anybody that's been like, quote unquote, like a hobbyist, you know, just kind of dipping their toes into the reselling thing. Tell me a little bit about that. Tell me about yourself, how you want, got into reselling in the first place. Okay. And let me know, what do you do full-time? What do you do part-time? How did you get into reselling? What made you consider yourself a hobbyist? Yeah. Because, I mean, if your hobbyist is still pulling full-time hours and making part-time money, I mean, I don't know if, you know, that's like a hobbyist or not. So, <laughs> so my interpretation of hobby resellers is that I I wouldn't classify me as part-time because I could use the money. The money is always great, right? But oh, yeah. I don't I don't need it. It's more just the pure joy of reselling, the pure joy of treasure hunting. Um, I could pass up things that are worth a lot of money uh, only for the fact that I know it might sit for a little bit. I'm more into like the wow factor. I want to know, oh, I haven't seen the, these in ages. I want to pick one up just for the wow factor. If it sells, great. If it don't sell, that's okay too because I might hold on to it for a little bit and then decide maybe I will, will sell it. So it's it's like a fine line of doing it part-time and just the sheer love of doing it. Okay. Now, Matt, it's a little scary that you kind of, you know, describe it the way you do because it's kind of like almost like borderline like hoarder-ish here, you know, because like, you're like buying things like for yourself yep. but like eventually selling them. I don't know if you have a family. I don't know if you're married or anything like that. So like let me know I like – is your significant other or somebody it's like, Hey man, I know you like doing this, you know, as a hobby, but you know, the house is getting a little crazy here. It helps with that. Is the, is that I don't have a house, so I can't just throw it into a basement or throw it into a garage. I live in a condo, so I have to refrain from buying too much stuff. Oh, There's a okay. fine line of what I will pick up, what I will sell and what I will keep for myself. So okay. it helps that I have a confined area, so to speak. That's um, a great point. And, you know, yeah. as resellers, we're always looking for, like, a bigger space. We want a shed. We want a, we want a warehouse. We want a thing. It's like, do we really need a bigger box for more of our junk, you know? Exactly. Um, so how I got started is um, when I was in high school, I always sold, buy and sold. I started with magic cards, and I was so, selling back and forth. And I worked at a hobby store, so I was actually selling my stuff at the store as well, sort of like a consignment. And oh, then nice. um, when I went to college, I started eBay in 1999. And then what I did was I bought things from Yahoo Auction when Yahoo had auctions, and then I resell them on eBay. So I did a little side money from there. A little online um, arbitrage there. Yeah. And then I took a break. Uh, fast forward to 2017 is when I moved from New York to Portland, Oregon. And when I did that transition, 
I was just doing my day job, which was boring technology. And then um, I started watching YouTube and I got into a YouTube hole. And I, the first reseller that I watched was Kevin, the Commonwealth picker. And I went, wow, he's picking up cool stuff. I didn't know they could sell. So and then that's when I started transitioning to being more generalized in my reselling ways and learning the tr tips and trades from him. And then I started to branch out and watch other YouTubers and then learn from my mistakes. And then I got sucked in. That's the, yeah, you get sucked in really quick. There had to have been something, Matt, that really sucked you in. The fine, you know, everyone's like, there's always like one fine where you like, you find something that was like for a dollar and you ended up like flipping it for like a thousand dollars. Was there anything like that when you first went, got back into the hobby? Um, that it was so, like, Ooh, okay. Now this is really getting my juices flowing. Um, it was, it was everything eighties. Cause I was a, I'm an eighties, eighties enthusiast. So when I saw things like vinyl records from the eighties music that I used to listen to, um, toys that I used to play with. I was like, wow, you know, my mom used to throw these out in the garbage. And now that I've seen this worth so much money, I'm like, I have to recoup some of this income back oh, again. Tell me about it. M Dustin and I, my brother in law, we're always like, man, if we all just like kept all of our toys, literally everything that we played with as kids, as 90s millennials kids here, hmm. we would be like, we wouldn't have to like, you know, pay for anything. Like if I would have kept my original like Pokemon binder, like I would be like straight, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. 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 Somewhere they're still sitting in Mrs. Cranch's uh third grade drawer. So <laughs> she might be, she might be a millionaire by now, but um, at least it's not in the bicycle spoke. Somebody has it. Dude, you, you, you know, you talk about magic cards and I, I was like in my middle school days, I played heavy magic so okay. like everyone had a baseball card on their spoke i had a magic card on my spoke wow so and uh i mean who knows i think it was just like a mana or something i didn't want to like put anything real crazy and i know a lot of people are listening to this is like what the heck are they talking about <laughs> magic but um so do you what do you do in portland are you like uh i'm thinking like you moved from new york to portland is it like software development or anything like that or um, I, I went from project management to sort of like a project manager manager in Portland. Um, it's a little bit different for the fact that um, I guess like it was more finance tech in New York. Gotcha. And now in Portland, it's sort of like all different industries. So it's a little bit different. I'm going from mm -hmm. a, like a specialist to a generalist. Gotcha. It's a boring job. That's it, why you, know I what's you know what's funny? I have a friend that does almost the same thing that you you know you talk about almost, and he, he tries to explain to me like what he does, and I'm like, dude, I have no idea how you make any money. Like every time you tell me, like I don't, I don't get it, and then I like explain to him like reselling, and they're like, I don't understand how you make money off of it. It's like, you know, but you're like in the middle. You're like kind of like knowing both sides of the sphere here, yeah, or the coin, but yeah. um. But Matt, before we get started in all of our, you know, uh, you know, all of our segments here, we do want to say hi to some people in the chat. We have Phil Five Dimes is in the building. Good to see you. We have Angie. She says she's super excited for Matt to be here. So shout out to Angie Resales. And we have Joe with I Flip That. What's going on, Joe? Man, I wish I would have. Did you go to Boss Reseller Remix, Matt? No, I didn't. I couldn't no? make it. Oh, dude, the FOMO I had, I still have FOMO. And it's, it was over. So next, next, uh, how, what you've been to a couple of, uh, reselling events, haven't you? I only been to one with a trash to cash meetup in Vegas. Okay. That's probably the closest one to you. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you know, if we ever do one here in Nashville, I'll definitely invite you. I know it's a long trip, but it'll be it's fun. worth it. It's worth it. It will be worth it. It will be yeah. worth it for sure. So, uh, and we have Alan. Good to see you, Alan. I haven't seen you in a while. Glad you're glad you're here. We have uh, Steven is here. Good to see you. Raycel Resell is in the building as well. We have Paul's in the building. He says, dang, look at that mansion that Matt lives in. Hey, spares no expense, right, Matt? Yeah. There we go. And uh, Paul's saying, Ray, stopping by for a quick second during the Eagles game. This shows this shows how much I love you. Thank you so much, Paul. I appreciate you. We have Ken SSK promo is in the building guys, Matt. I don't know if you've been watching much of our channel, but there's something experimental that we're doing here on the Nashville flippers channel. We are playing 
uh, NCAA 2000. I don't know, one of them, right? Okay. And uh, I have Ken as my character that I'm playing through. So he's currently in high school, and he's trying to earn a scholarship to a Power 5 uh, college. He plays quarterback. He's number 69. Uh, last game was probably his worst game. He got benched, and he plays quarterback, and he plays strong safety. So his his school that he wants to go to is Ohio State, but it ain't looking too good. It ain't looking too good. So we'll yeah. see what happens. We have maybe Jill's in the building. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe yeah. if he's an Oregon Duck. Maybe oh make- yeah, hey, that's another one of his schools that he wants to go to. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, Ohio State, Oregon, and South Carolina. He had to pick the SEC school. So there we go, Angie. Good to see you, Paul. Let's see here. Go Dolphins. Oh, nice. Okay. Let's see here. We have Sonia is in the building. Good to see you, Sonia. Yeah. Glad that you can stop by. And Grams and Pops is in the building as well. Holy smokes! ABC Matt is in Carrie's vacation home. There you <laughs> go. So hey, guys. Speaking of Grams and Pops, we had them last Wednesday here on the channel. So if you guys haven't seen that episode, go back and watch it because it is filled with a lot of really interesting, get to know them a little better. We have Biscuit Butt. What's going on, Archie? I am so inspired to now become a non-full-time, non-part-time hobby reseller just like you, Matt. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So we also have here the Distinguished Octopus. Good afternoon, humans. Good to see you. Jill, hi, Ken. My chat wasn't working. Don't see you. Oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. We have good, what is that? Good, great, fabulous. How's it going? Good to see you. Based on the performance, Ken's going to straight to the workforce. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, uh, all right. So, Matt. So, hobbyist. Yes. Hobbyist reseller. And I know I've, I, you know, I've been doing a little bit of research on you and you say you, you were um, kind of experimenting with uh, buying and selling magic cards, but I see a lot of sports cards and yes. other trading TCG cards. Is that something that you're another hobbyist at? Do you collect, do you sell? What so is that I'll, looking I'll, like? I'll go a little bit deeper. So like, yeah, um... I w- I, we want to get deep in the weeds. Matt. <laughs> so ABC, Matt, how I came up with that. It was before everything happened. It was just American born Chinese, American born Chinese. Oh. And that's how it started. And then um, I was always into sports cards, too. I was into everything. But mm-hmm. uh, I started doing card breaking and I needed a breaking handle. So I said, all right, I'll do ABC, Matt. And I started breaking cards and then people started to change it and call me always be closing. I go, oh, you know what? I like that. Oh, so I carried it. So I carried that over to reselling. That I'm always trying to close. close always the deals. be closing. I like yeah. that. Was that like a Wolf of Wall Street saying, or is that just like a something close to that? I think. Yeah, something like um, that, right? So I have like a collection of my own. I have like two two Babe Ruth autograph cards. Wow. I have Mantle autograph wow. cards. I have tons of Michael Jordan autographs. I have memorabilia, all that jazz. So I have a collection of myself. But those are all put into like a bank, safe deposit yes. box, insured and everything. So that doesn't take up space in the home. What really takes yes. up the space of the home is the reselling part. Yeah. So, oh, man, that's awesome. And I was going to ask you, your logo is a man wearing a backpack. Could you tell us yep. a little bit about that? Yeah. So, like, I another reason why I'm a hobby uh, reseller is because I don't, I don't officially own a car. So what I do is if I need to take a car, I rent a car. But for the most part, I do everything public transportation. I really? carry I carry loads of stuff. I carry three IKEA bags, uh, one backpack, and I I lug it into the mass transit system and I go to and from there. This is blowing my mind, Matt. Yeah. This is blowing my mind. Because here and, in Nashville, if you don't have a car, you ain't getting anywhere because public transportation here is like dog crap so <laughs> well, it goes back to new york too because in new york you know you buy groceries you go everywhere you're always walking a lot 70 yeah. percent of the people in new yorkers they don't drive so i just carry that over i'm like i'm just so used to managed transit and you know what and then if i have really good months i could always take a lift and do a tax write-off on that and get delta sky miles from that from the link so i i benefit from all parts of life with left you know if i have good months that's amazing so okay so matt let me bring a little scenario here okay 
So it's Saturday morning, Matt's got his garage sales planned out. Like, what yep. does that look like? Are you I walking, are you out. taking the bus and then going or whatever? What is the mass, like, what is mass transit look like there in Portland? So like, you know, every Wednesday they come out with all the garage and estate sales that happen. I actually plan it out. I look at the map. I like, all right, how do I get from X to X to Y? What, how, is there an easy transfer to go from Y to Z? And then how long is going to take me? And I, I just plan it out throughout from Wednesday to Friday, just to know how my, I'm going to plan out my attack. Mm-hmm. And then I always have a fallback. If let's say a garage sale is a dud, I, I'll have a fallback to know, Hey, is there one in the surrounding area that I would go to that wouldn't take too much time transportation wise to get to the next area? Okay. Or for estate sales, it's a little easier because you get pictures and everything. You know which one to tackle. And if you do it long enough, you know which estate sale has uh, better prices than others. And you know how the, the line's going to be and when those the address gets to disclose. So you know, kind of, you kind of figure what you want to plan an attack for the weekend. <sighs> Okay, that sounds that sounds in. awesome. So no, it sounds great. So Matt's hitting up these garage sales Saturday morning. You're freaking killing it. You're killing it. Let's say you come across I don't know a lot of like um, Masters of the Universe collection, and you're like I want all of it, and you know yeah. that you can't take it back on the bus. What does that look like? Are you putting it? You are you calling an Uber? Like what? What's or a lift, like what? Is, what are we doing here? Um, if I know the margins of what the profitability would be, then I, I could contemplate if I'm going to take a lift or not. If not, I, I would say I would try to do my deduction. How much should I take? And then I would have a conversation with them if I maybe I could pick up another, the rest of it on another trip, mm. which I have done before. Okay, you tell us a little bit about that, like certain scenarios in the past where you're like, okay, I've come in here on the bus. This is my route. And then it's like, man, I'm finding, like you said, and this is what is crazy to me. You're thinking like way ahead. You're like, okay, here's the profit margin. I'm thinking about the lift. I'm thinking about coming back. Like, is it still profitable after all I do after everything that I have to do to get this stuff back into my condo? Is it still going to be worth my time is still going to be worth my money still going to be worth my effort which is amazing because sometimes people just buy stuff off the whim and they don't even even calculate the 13 percent that ebay takes off the bat you know so it's like they're already losing right off the bat but you're like you're like lightning years away (laughs) from stuff like that but okay a scenario that that's happened to you in the past okay so like my brain is always churning so like um i went to a garage sale one time and there was so many trading cards from various things from Marvel, baseball, basketball, everything. Uh, you had D ring binders. You had, you know, boxes full of cards and I go, wow. All right. He, this person lives in this area. It takes me, I don't know, 30 minutes to take a bus ride back to my area. If I had to lug this, I'm like, what, how I'm going to lug all this. So I'm looking at the, I'm looking at all these cards again and I go, well, the profit margin is not that big for this. I could let that go. Wow, these these things are a huge, huge buyer for these. So I, I have to take these. So then I calculate, all right, I have to lug it. How heavy it is it? Like, can I carry all this? And that's where all my brain's going. So mm-hmm. like the Marvel cards, I was like, all right, these the baseball cards, I'm going to pass up. I'm just going to take a few here and there. And then, um, but the Marvel cards were worth a lot. So I said, I could carry three three D ring bind, there's no problem. So I, I end up taking that and a handful of other cards and I left the others for other resellers. I'm like, you could have those. Those profit margins are pretty tight. I'd rather take these instead. That's insane. Yeah. Like I said, man, you're the dedication is uncanny because think about it. People don't even want to you tell them about reselling and they're like, ah, eh, that's too much work. And they have like everything at their fingertips and you're like, man, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. And it's a hobby and you're still doing it. Yep. That's insane. That's insane. I love it. I love it. Let's say hi to some people in the chat that just popped in. We have, uh, let's see here. Um, art is coming in the building. He says, worst guest, worst guest ever. (laughs) 
Grabs and Pops is in here. Sonia's in here. Biscuit Butt, The Art of Resale. I hope everyone's having a drinking hearing this guy talk. There we go. There we go. Wow. Pensacola has the worst public transportation. That's how it is here too, Angie. Grabs and Pops. Public mass transit in South Dakota equals catch a ride with the neighbor. Interesting. Hello. Uh, yeah, that's how it is here too. There, the public transportation is terrible. Art says you're you're his favorite Matt. Matt, ABC wow. Matt, greater than part time picker Matt. Oh, wow. there wow. we go. Oh, what's up, Jimmy? Jimmy's is here. I think I have three hundred of Matt's stickers. I collect and I collect them like Magic the Gathering cards. Matt, I don't have a sticker, and I know that um your stickers have a praying mantis on them. The recent yep. ones that I believe. Why yep. a praying mantis? Well, um, for a period of time, I took um, kung fu um, training, and it was southern praying mantis style. So I got a fascination with mantis, and people like Grams and Pops know that I I do risque things like I eat bugs for Ooh. shock value. So it's a little combination of both, and ah. I made a sticker out of it. So when where can we get one of your praying mantis stickers? Is there like a merch I'll, shop or anything like that? Uh yeah, I mean there's abcmat.com. Uh, okay. but for you, Ray, I'll give you one. I'll give you one for free. We'll trade. We'll trade for sure, Matt. But okay, if when good. if people want the link to his link tree is down in the description below. So check out his stickers and guys, hit the thumbs up. We have we have uh 20 people in here. There's only 7 thumbs up. Come on, guys. ABC, ABC Matt's working hard out here in these streets. <laughs> he deserves a thumbs up. I got an amazing new ABC Matt sticker and Boss Reseller Remix. And, uh, yeah, there you go. They said, yep. uh, R says, I donate a dollar every time to a single mom's organization, a.k.a. the Strip Club. Oh. I think uh, I think we I think uh, we knew that. Let's see here. I put ABC Matt sticker in a place of all the stuff I stole at the garage sale. Okay. Sonia says, wow, Matt's dedicated. Not sure if I have that kind of discipline of mapping out all possibly by foot. That is dedication for sure. So let's see here. Good, great, fabulous. Says I gave all his stickers out at the remix. Yes, there we go. Man, I wish I would have been there. So dang, I need a do you not have a website art? Come on now. That's the first <laughs> thing, man. I think I think I do own the domain, the Nashville Flippers, but I haven't done anything with it. But at least I own the domain for the website. That's the so, first step. Yeah, that's the first step for sure. And uh, he's de- he's dedicated to the craft, working less than that. That's real talk. That's right. So, what's some of the things that you like to pick up, Matt? Like you're um, really like things that get your juices going. Like you walk up to the yard sale and you're like, yeah, I love this. 80s stuff, 80s nostalgia. 80s. It's yeah. all 80s stuff. Um, like 80s records really get my, my blood bo- um, running. Um, 80s toys, um, 80s VHS. Anything in the 80s really gets me because um, I, I'll let it be known. I, I was born in 1978. So technically, I should be a '90s kid, I guess. Mm-hmm. But then my brothers just got me into the '80s, and that's how I ah, really love the yeah. '80s. Okay, what was your favorite toy growing up as a kid? Were you like a video game guy? Were you like Ninja Turtles? Oh, it was Transformers, the diecast Transformers. Transformers. Yes, I had all the diecasts when they were made of metal. Now they, dude, made I still, dude, I'm a '90s kid, and so I still like Transformers. Like that's the first, like. Every birthday, it was like Transformers, and then Power Rangers yep. came out, and I was like, oh, let's go, Power Ranger, baby, let's go. Because it's basically it, the same thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. It makes me cry because like, like I see things like Fireball Island board game, and I see how much that goes for, and I see the Transformers and see how much those go for. I'm like, wow. You know, I played with them. I kept them in good conditions. Imagine how much money I could have made off <sighs> of it. Only woulda, coulda, shoulda. You know what I mean? Yeah. I saw a Transformer the other day at Target. It was a you know Optimus Prime. It looked like a remake of the original, and it was die cast, really nice. Um, just the just the front, not the trailer. But yep. it didn't transform. It was just like a like a um, like a die cast model of Gen One, but it just didn't tra- it didn't transform. I'm like, why would you want to buy a Transformer that doesn't transform? Yeah, that defeats the purpose. Yeah. It's just like I mean, it looked it looked cool, but again, you, it's got to transform. It's got to transform. Grams and oh, Pop yeah. says I want to host a telethon to get Matt a right a ride for the next weekend. 
It's, Ooh. Is there like a subscription service to like Lyft or Uber? Is that like a thing? They do have something like that where you get a discount if you just pay like a monthly surcharge or something like okay. that. Be a subscri- subscribe, but I don't do it because I don't take rides enough. I calculate all that too. <laughs> Ooh, there you go. There you go. I love yeah. it. A biscuit yeah. butt is saying Matt's next channel will be a hitchhiking channel. That would get Ooh. some views, man. Definitely. That would get some views for sure. Finding Keepers Resale. Good to see you. ABC Matt with Sub Nashville Flippers. Good to see you. Let's see here. Matt needs to make a bug eating channel. How many <laughs> types of bugs have you eaten, Matt? Um, ate a spider, caterpillar, grasshopper, scorpion, uh, Whoa. starfish, uh, a fermented shark, a, all various things. Because I travel a lot too, so I always like to try things that people don't like to eat. Mm. So I, I do that too. Okay. Hey, when in Rome. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Steven is saying I still have all my Transformers, man. Lucky for you. Wow. I'm trying to see. I'm looking at your shelves, right? I'm like, I'm jealous. Yeah, I got, I don't know if you can see here. There's my trans, my uh, Power Ranger collection up here. All those wow. are, yeah. So, um, yeah, this room is a disaster. My wife, <laughs> uh, um, we got our carpets cleaned. Um, yeah on tuesday so i had to like move everything out of this room and move it back in and my wife's like you got to do something about your stuff in your closet and so in my last video there's one video i don't know if it was the last one but i went through some of my reseller or some of my shoe collection Mm -hmm. and there's stuff in there that i forgot that i had there's like a shoe that's worth like a thousand dollars there's like shoes that are like falling apart and um and my wife made me uh go through my closet and just get rid of literally like half of my closet wow. you know like the stuff that you have and you're like it doesn't fit anymore anymore and you're like yeah when i lose 10 pounds i'm gonna get back in that shirt gone <laughs> out of here but if i, I had a lot a- of go ahead sorry <laughs> i got a lot of really cool um like uh graphic tees then yep. I'm just going to like box them up and sell them on whatnot. Like a reseller box started like two bucks and just get rid of it. Get they something talk. out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, if I, I was a sneakerhead, my wife would divorce me. So I'm not, oh, I'm not even going to go there. Yeah. I did get these really cool shirts in the mail. Look at this. This one says. Oh, boy. But it's Jim Carrey from Dumb and Dumber. Yep. Yep. And then That's awesome. this, one's, this one's my favorite. It's Hanson, but it says Nirvana. Nirvana, that's awesome. I think it's. I think they're. I think they're hilarious, especially like Gen Zs. You know, like people that like wear band T-shirts and they've never like listened to the band or anything. Oh yeah. So, I think that's a. Those are hits for sure. So he's a Fear Factor reseller. I like that, Jimmy. I like that. Will we'll be better off to ask him what he hasn't eaten. Oh. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, I haven't eaten the Filipino bulat, uh, which is uh, uh, chicken embryo in the in the in the egg. Uh, I won't go too detail with that, but yeah, I've seen that, that though. Yet. I would. Yeah, I had uh, one of my one of my really good friends back in like 2010s era was a um, he was a hibachi chef. Oh. My sister worked at this hibachi restaurant, and I got to like befriend like the the hibachi chef, the main one. He was from Indonesia, and so he would always take me to like the like the Asian like restaurants and like the marketplaces and stuff. And so, the fir- I remember the first time I tried like the dorian fruit. Oh, you know, yeah. it's like that one that smells like garbage. Oh yeah, it smells disgusting, but the fruit is so good. And I, every time I'm like, hey man, anytime you go there, like. Give me one of them Dorian fruits because they're they're amazing. The texture is just unique. It's, it's so unique, hard to and I mean, my favorite fruit is mango, so it's like mm. it's kind of a little bit like that. Yeah. So I don't know. I liked it. I really enjoyed yeah. it. So you gotta get past the smell, though. Yes, and I I got past the, the smell for sure. Ray has a shirt for you. Who's that? Greatest song ever written. Umbop. There we go. Yeah, did you not see it, Ken? Here we go. Nirvana. There you go. For all the Gen Zs out there. All right, Matt. Moving on. We right. do want to start off the first segment of the show. Overrated, underrated. Get to know you a little bit better. 
okay. 10 different subjects, five being reselling related, five not being reselling related. And you let me know in your opinion, if you would, if, if there would be overrated or underrated. All right. Okay. All right. Sounds but before good. we do that, Matt, we do want to give a shout out to the sponsor of the podcast. And that is our good friends over at my reseller genie. Have you get, have you had a chance to meet faith and Paul at all? With my reseller not. genie, oh, they're a fantastic, fantastic people. I know they're they were just at Boss Reseller Remix, but if you seem like a very analytical person, Matt, so yeah. but for the people that aren't very analytical person people and they need a little help with their accounting at the end of the year and they're resellers, my reseller genie's got your back, and your boy Ray's got your back with the fifteen percent off your first month if you use the code Nashville Flippers. So guys, if you suck at anything accounting and you're a reseller, give my reseller genie a try and use the code Nashville Flippers and you're gonna get fifteen percent off your first month. So Matt, overrated underrated number one, reselling trading cards. I think it's it's so hard. I would say it's overrated. Um Ooh. only for the only for the fact that there's so many to go into and people just hype it up so much mm. and it's not there. It's not going to be what you expect it to be. It's, you know, it started off as being a cheap box and you're getting a boom card. Now you're saying, I'm spending a ton, but I'm hoping to get this card that everyone's talking about it and you yes. don't get it. Yes. I say it's overrated. That's a great point. And a lot of people can go... You know, I'm a big Pokemon fan. I have, you know, I buy, sell, trade Pokemon. I just got back from a from a card show last Sunday, last Saturday. Fixing to do a video on that, so stay tuned for that. But the money that you spend trying to pull that one card, you might as well just buy it off of eBay. You'll yes. save money. You'll save money. So I've learned that. I've learned that the hard way. But it's just so much fun. To rip I open, uh, we went to uh, funny story. Uh, Matt, my um, my wife and I went to lunch like on last Friday, and there's a car. My my card shop is like right next door to this where we went to lunch, and we had to wait mm-hmm. a little bit. And I was like, well, let me just jump in the card shop and get a you know get a couple Pokemon packs. And um, they called me when I was checking out, and so I come out and we opened up. I was like, okay, you open up this pack. I'll open up this pack. And so she opens up the the pack and she's like, what am I supposed to be looking for? And I was like, well, this was Paldea Evolve. You know, there's like three Charizards in the set, four Charizards. And I said, well, if you get a Charizard, it's a pretty good pull. And she's like, like this one? And it was like a gold Charizard. And Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, what the crap, man? I've opened up like 20 of these and haven't gotten any Charizard. And she had her first pack of ever opening up any kind of Pokemon Charizard right off the bat. So. I'm getting it graded right now just because it's like her first Charizard that she's ever pulled. So it's kind of got a little bit of a sentimental value, but I digress, Matt, like you were saying, um, trying to chase that card, you just end up spending mo- way more money than you, you're supposed to. So yep. I've been, a lot of people get into debt trying to, trying to do that. So yeah. always, always be closing Matt, like for people that, where you were doing these box breaks yep. for people that don't know what a box break is, Matt, could you kind of explain that? I know that we just kind of throw that word around, like yeah. people expect to know what we're talking about. Yeah. So like, you know, cards are getting more expensive now, so people can't just buy boxes now. So what they do is there's a person who's called a breaker and he'll have a whole full case of cards and he goes, all right, instead of you buying a box up from this case, Maybe we may have some fun with it. Let's say um, if it's baseball, uh, you want to buy the New York Yankees, maybe it's $100. And any New York Yankee player that gets pulled out from this case, it's yours. You mm. just pay $100. Or maybe it's something like a serial break. So cards have like a serial number to it. And then maybe let's say it's 1 to 10 and you buy a spot in there. And you say, I want to buy anything that's number 2 of 10. It's going to be mine. All right, you pay X amount. Instead of buying a whole case, you're buying sort of a, a finite uh, number or a finite player or a finite team. And then if that mm-hmm. pulls, you take all, you reap in the rewards. But there's a chance where it, not, it doesn't get hit. So, so that's a gamble you play. But yep. it's cheaper than buying a whole case or a box. 
So you exactly. could take on the risk maybe. Yeah. And do you do still do that now? Oh, on occasion. Yeah. When I have the itchy gambling lucky. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll do I that. feel like you would be great at that, like on whatnot, like breaking, breaking, you know, cards for people on whatnot. I try. I, I might dabble with it. I've done whatnot selling before, um, but I gotta. I, I gotta see. I, I like to be on the receiver and then being the the actual breaker. Okay. 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 Nice. Yeah. Nice. Nice. All right. Moving on here, Matt. Number two, overrated, underrated cheesecake. Oh. Um. I know we. I know you're eating a lot of bugs, but uh, what are yeah. we? What are we doing with the cheesecake here, Matt? I think it's underrated. Um. I'm a cheesecake snob. I'm from Ooh. New York, so New oh. York has good cheesecake. I think people people don't give it a chance only because they hear cheese, and some people are repulsive with cheese, or they mm. just don't like the texture. I'm like, try it. You you like it, and then you can mix and dab. Maybe you need some strawberry on it to cut into the sweet. Maybe you're not having the right cheesecake. Maybe they're making okay. it wrong. Uh, but but I think they, people are should try and give it a shot. What's the best cheesecake you've ever eaten? Um, there's a place in uh, downtown New York called Eileen's Cheesecake. Now, they're, in New York, everyone knows about Junior's Cheesecake. But I feel Junior's key- Cheesecake is very rich and very thick and very mm. heavy. I like Eileen's Cheesecake because it's very, when you cut into it, it's very soft. It's very delicate. You could taste the the the, the graham cracker. You could taste everything. It's, it's just it's sort of like silk. It tastes Ooh. really good. Bro, my mouth is watering right now. Let us know, guys, in the comments. Overrated, underrated cheesecake. Um, I'm curious to see what everyone's opinion is on that. Uh, Grandma's Pop says, Jello brand makes a good cheesecake in a box. <laughs> no bake. Pretty sure it's the best. There you go. Hey, hey, Boston cream cheesecake. I love all mm. cheesecake. When it's my birthday, you know, my wife says, what kind of cake do you want? And I'm like, you know I want a good cheesecake, right? <laughs> so she usually makes me a cheesecake, and she's a great baker. So that's why I'm like overweight. So, <laughs> um, all right, moving on. Uh, number three, estate sales, Matt. Um, I I think it's underrated. Um, a lot of resellers they just hate estate sales. They say, oh, they charge an arm and a leg, and yeah, everything like that. Well, maybe in your area you might not have found the right estate sales. There mm. are still a couple of estate sale companies that still will work with you with prices. They still know that, you know, they have to sell these things. They have to clear it out. It's a liquidation. So them putting at a high price, it's not going to move. They ha- their, their job is to make things move in the, in the house. They have to yeah. sell it. So um, there's still good estate sales there. And I feel like at estate sales, well, at least in my area, they, the people the people there are pack rats okay so they they'll hold oh. on to it for forever until unfortunately they pass away so when they pass away the family's like i can't deal with this let me have a estate sale company sell it um so you find amazing stuff at estate sales uh sales um the garage sales sometimes you, you get redundancy with items but estate sale you always see something that you've never seen before Okay, so the key is to find that good company that are willing to work with you on the pricing. Oh yeah. So what does that look like for you, Matt? Like, what's I feel like you have a, like a very strong negotiation tactics. Yeah. So like, especially at a state sale, you're like, "Hey, man, I'm here. I'm fixing to buy all of it. Like, let's work out a price here. Like, are you like, what does that look like for you? So, um, this one particular estate sale company, I'll put them, put them as example. Um. I work with them. I buy it at their price for now. And then I talk to them a little bit. I go, hey, you know, I have a YouTube channel. You know, maybe we could work something out. Like, ah. I'll, I'll, I'll advertise your estate sale company if you could work with a price for me, you know. And then that way I do more and more of your estate sale company and it gets more publicized on my channel. Um, so then after a few estate sales, they go, hey, you know, we have an estate sale company uh, sale coming up. What in those pictures do you like? I like, I like this one and that one and this one. Like, what's, you know, eBay's market value? What do they, they charge it for? And I'm like, this is what the average price is on eBay. I'm willing to pay this much. He goes, oh, yeah, I understand. You need you have a profit margin, too. As long as we make money, you make money, we're, we're all good. So, I like, I work with them on prices, and then I advertise for them. So, it's like happy marriage, you know? Wow. Okay. So, Matt's using his resources here. 
you're leveraging your resources to get a better pricing. That's interesting. I've never really thought about that. I know that well, there used to be an Amazon bin store here and they re they reached out to us and they're like, Hey man, I know that you have a TikTok YouTube channel. They're like, come through, show off the store and we'll like hook you up. And they, yep. every, every time we went there, they would hook us up. They would tell us, they would tell us what they're, they would have and all that stuff. Since then they sold the business. So it's no more uh. hooks, hook up. But again, guys, listen to what Matt's trying to say here. He's leveraging his, he's leveraging his social media. I think that's amazing. Yeah. So what does that look like? You just like, Hey, shout out to, um, Billy's estate sale company. Yeah. You know, I say, they, here's my favorite, favorite, uh, estate sale company. Here's their business card. I put it up on the screen. I'm like, here's their business card. If you ever in the Portland, Oregon, uh, area, you know, go with them and cause they'll, they'll treat you good and stuff like that. And awesome. then eventually, eventually I'm still waiting. Um, they're going to do an interview session with me so that I can learn the oh, ins and outs of their yes. side of things. That's um, great. So I'm, I'm waiting for that, but it's going to okay. happen. Yeah. Are you going to put that on your channel as well? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, man, that Big would be content. great. Yeah. I love, I love watching stuff like the inside baseball kind of stuff for sure. Oh yeah. So, you know, Matt, now that you say something about that, about leveraging your, you know, your, this, your opportunities, you know, my local car shop that I have, the first time that I went, you know, I kind of did like a real, you know, me going in the store, showing off the store or whatever. I didn't even think anything about it. You know, like I wanted to show off what the store had because they have amazing, it's like cards and collectibles. So they have like amazing stuff, right? The yeah. next time I went in there, they're like, hey man, I saw your reel. I really appreciate it. It's like next time you're here, they gave me like a t-shirt and a hat. And like ever since they've been like super cool with me and like, let me know like when new product is coming in or like hold stuff or like go and get stuff or so again, I didn't expect anything in return, but just knowing that there, you do have like that opportunity to leverage your social media could really help you in the long run. So oh, yeah. I never and thought about it with the state sales or garage sales or anything like that. Yeah. And, but it's like that for any job. You want to network because you never mm -hmm. know along the lines you might need them or they need you. You know, you help you scratch their back, they scratch yours. Yeah, I love it. I love it, man. Grams and Pops is saying estate sales are growing on me. I think I found the good a good company. That's awesome. Starts with, do you know who I am? Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Ray Sale Resale says, we have one that does the last hour. Everything goes for a dollar and they tend to overprice so there's lot left at the end Ooh, that's good yeah match and leverage his his taxis too hey there you go yeah the lift that would be a great video yeah that would be a great video matt we were yeah. just in portland today at the vintage antique show at the expo mm -hmm. shout out to marie glad you're here so is portland still cool and like living in the 90s again so that reference is the show portlandia I don't know. I yet. love Portlandia. Such a good you know, show. You know the song uh, uh, "Living the Life in Portland." Yeah, I haven't watched it in a long time, but that show, the writing is Chef's Kiss. <laughs> yeah, it's so um, good. I would say people are living in the '90s because I, I'll be going down like a city block, and then I hear someone pumping the, their music from the '90s, and I'm like, "Wow!" <laughs> Dang, I, I need to leave. I need to live in portland this just dawned on me matt too that yeah. living in portland like the price of living is so much higher than say here in nashville yeah so when you buy when you're buying stuff at garage sales and estate sales do you take that into effect is like i know that i'm kind of playing paying a little bit of more of a premium let, let's say someone that lives in alabama oh yeah i mean the prices here are higher when i reselling and people who watch my videos they notice it they go wow you know you're paying x amount for this um so i have to take that into account too the, the margins the margins are big because i have to make sure that it's still worthwhile for me more than somebody who lives in let's say alabama who gets it really cheap uh so they have more wiggle room so i i have to really be mindful of what the margins are for every item there you go there you go let's see here um, I traded a poem for a sandwich one time in Portland. <laughs> I don't know if that's part of the Portlandia or if you really did that. So, 
no, I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah. All right, moving on, moving on. Number four, overrated, underrated, Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. Are uh, we, have we had it with them already? See, or I'm not – still wanting more? See, I'm not Swift. I'm not Swifty. I mean, I love selling, you know, Taylor Swift stuff because they sell like hotcakes, but I'm not a Swifty, so I'm going to say it's overrated. Overrated? I think, I think it's just hyped up so much. And, you know, Bro, like, I'm trying to watch this football, you know, the the Chargers and, and Kansas City, and every yeah. five seconds they're showing Taylor Swift. I know. it. You know, like all celebrity relationships, it, it's so hard for it to work out, and I just feel like it's not going to work out with these two. <sighs> I hope it does. I'm not a Swifty yeah. either, but I mean, I just hope it does. I don't know. Yeah. At least one, you know, it's they. it seems pure. They seem to like each other. So I don't know. I don't All know. Right. <laughs> moving on, moving on. Number five, Etsy. Overrated or underrated, Matt? Ooh. <sighs> That's a hard one. I would say as a seller is overrated, but as a buyer is underrated. Okay, and then, and why I say that is that it's overrated um, because everyone thinks it's uh, it's I don't know it's the the what when I see the fees for Etsy I, I was like wow it's so high and but you know but people love it because they like oh you know I it's it's such a niche and you know I could sell really well there and everything but I think it's really hard for a seller to sell on Etsy. You really have to have dedication. And I think people just think it's, it's a cakewalk. As a buyer, I think it's underrated uh, because I think buyers always go to like a secondary market to buy certain things. But, you know, there's a lot of creative people on Etsy and you could find a lot of stuff that you, if you want to pinpoint into a certain thing that you're looking for, I believe Etsy could, could follow through with that. Have you ever sold anything on Etsy, like personalized anything? I feel like that's something that you might have dabbed in, dabbled in. Um, I bought something on Etsy. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think what I bought. I think uh, it was more for cosplaying. I had oh, to buy yes. different items, uh, and Etsy was the right place to get it. Okay. Yeah. I was eyeballing a um, a Jedi costume one time on Etsy a couple a couple Halloweens ago. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't, I couldn't like, it wasn't like a lot. I think it was like a $300 and it like, it was only like the cloak and like, not even like the boots or any like of the hardware. Yeah. I'm like, I can't bring myself to, to spend this much. But you so. know, Etsy will have it because like eBay won't have something like that. Exactly. Custom, yeah. you know, to your exact measurement. So yeah. there you go. Hey, they're saying don't upset the Swifties, Matt. Don't upset the Swifties. <laughs> there you go. Etsy did better than eBay at getting the younger shoppers on the platform. I know. Yeah. What's your thought of that, Matt? Um, so I'm a Generation X, and I feel mm-hmm. like I probably like the borderline you know, that still uses eBay. Uh, I agree to the last segment you had with Grams and Pops that it's kind of dying in eBay. Mm-hmm. We only could only time would tell, but. I'm hoping that it will carry over, but it looks like people are going to like Depop and, um, you know, they're buying stuff they want in Amazon. Uh, they don't really think of eBay as a source to get stuff. I hope that changes because, yeah. man, we're in trouble. What's your, yeah. do you just sell on eBay, Matt, or what is that looking like? Um, I do eBay, Poshmark, Macari, and Facebook Marketplace. Okay. Nice. Uh, All right. But majority of it is in eBay. Okay. All right. Moving on. Number six, Matt. Halloween. Overrated, underrated. Are you big Halloweeny? No, I'm not actually. Um, see, like I, I, it's hard. It's like if you're a homeowner, if you have a house, I yeah. feel like Halloween's really big because then you could decorate your house and everything. Yeah. I live in a, I live in a condo. What, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna dress up my balcony. And it's like, you could. Hey, I when I was a kid, I would always trick or treat in apartments, and and you know, because you're you're getting the best bang for your buck. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like you're hitting a hallway, and you're like boom, 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 boom. You know? So. I think it's overrated, but people with homes, they, they probably say it's underrated. There you go. They like that. You dress up for Halloween? Do you go to like Halloween parties and all that stuff? No, I don't. But the only time I cosplay is like Comic Con or Ooh. something of that nature. What do you? What's the cosplay? What is that looking like? Uh, one time I did. 
uh, Luffy from One Piece. Another time, I, well, another time I did Ted Lasso. Uh, you did Ted Lasso. That's funny. Yeah. And then um, this coming one, which I do Comic Con on a cruise ship, I'm gonna Ooh. dress up. I'm gonna do an Iron Man. Oh, what does that what does that look like? Are you 3D printing? Are you buying on Etsy? What does that look like? Um, I'm doing a modified version of it. I'm doing a motorcycle Iron Man. So I'm gonna have like a leather coat of Iron Man with like motorcycle pants, and then have his um, light up gloves, and I'm gonna have the actual um, helmet that actually opens and closes, and you could talk talk to Jarvis Whoa. and everything. So it's gonna be like a biker Iron Man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like that. That's cool. And, and the only reason I do that is because one, I'm on a cruise ship, so I don't want to be hot in in the body armor. Wow, that's a great two, point. Two, normally with body armors, you need somebody to help you. So, Ooh. I actually use a mo- motorcycle version so I could do everything myself. Hmm. See, thinking ahead. You're thinking ahead. Yep. You're thinking ahead. I like it. I like yep. it. Let's see here. Um. Hey, race hell resell. They said they've been to Dragon Con. Yeah, so they they like to cosplay too. So let's see here. Ray, they also said um, Gen X forever. Um, Kenneth saying Halloween is underrated. Ken, you probably just dress up as uh, Santa Claus for Halloween. <laughs> so let's see maybe here. you dress up as Jimmy. Who knows? G- right? Yeah. Until my Halloween inventory is gone, I'm going with underrated. There we go. There we go. Gosh, cosplaying is fun. It is. It's so it much is. fun. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I went to my first cosplay I've ever did. I went the basic Mario route, and I went to an anime convention here in Nashville. And uh, dude, I had so much fun. It's like you get into character, and people want to take pictures with you, as long as yeah. you're okay with it. You know, I know some introverts won't like it, but you know, if you're okay with it. I mean, it's all it's all fun. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. All right, moving on. Number seven, Timu. Overrated, or underrated, Matt. Oh, I, I I don't have an opinion about this. I never bought anything from Timu. Okay. Uh, I keep seeing ads for them, and I know oh, like, yeah. like bags of money buys a lot from them, but I don't know if I can make an opinion about this. Uh, I guess I'll go underrated because. Uh, I, I'm probably just so much out there that I haven't tapped into. So it's crazy. Have you bought anything like a, off of Alibaba or a DH Gate or anything like that? I have not, and I, I guess my thinking is that it's going to be cheap quality. Maybe they proved me wrong, but I haven't pulled the trigger yet. Okay. <laughs> Thomas saying ninety nine percent sure Timu uses uh, child and slave labor. So <laughs> what's up, Lisa? Good to see you. I think what Timu. It's basically like Alibaba, but okay. it's like all the stuff is like already here in the States, like somewhere mm-hmm. in California. So it gets to where you need it to go quicker. So like from Alibaba, it takes like in DHA, DHK, it takes like freaking forever. Oh, yeah. But I think with Timu, you get the stuff within like a week. But have you, you ever say, tried it? Yeah, I love it. I love you it. Do. Okay. I love it. But you got to be have- careful with what you, I mean, you're. You know what you're getting. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like basically like cheap Amazon stuff, which is all coming from overseas, which is fine if you know what you're what you're pick what you're buying and some things mm-hmm. are better than others. So uh Angie says overrated, they steal all your information, it's bad news. Ooh. Ooh. Hey, I got nothing to hide, Angie. I got nothing. TikTok's already got all my information. Facebook's probably got all my information. They all got it. I got a, what is it? Like a meta quest and you have to have a Facebook account to even use it. So it's like, you know, it's like, they got it all, man. They got my eyes. They got my voice. They're like, you know, everything about me. I'm, I'm out there, baby. My dark, web, you know, everything about me is probably on, my, on the dark web somewhere. So well, they find it on YouTube <laughs> or on you. Yeah. I got nothing to hide, man. I got nothing to hide, but yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Hey, what did Dwight say? Um, Gosh, I'm messing up the joke. Um, oh man, what did he say? It's um, what is something when people steal your identity? Identity frauds, no joke, Jim. I think that's the joke. So, oh really yeah, screw the pooch on I'm, that one. I'm Asian, Jim. 
love it i love it man that episode was so good yeah so all right moving on number eight esports matt overrated or underrated oh <laughs> i think it's overrated I yeah i want to see i want to see old school sports esports yeah i mean if i want to see esports I'll, I'll check out a gamer who's on youtube or something you know i, I don't see the tournament portion of it i, I don't okay. get it maybe i'm old school okay okay uh, the one that I really like to watch is Tetris, Tetris and they have, okay. they play on an, it's the original Tetris for Nintendo. They play on a Nintendo and, uh, what is love like regular TV, what a like box TV. And it mm-hmm. is wild. Really? I mean, they're just like, they like hold a controller. Like, you know, they're just like, like that. It's, it's wild. But, um, and another not esports related, but this, I just, I was just thinking about this. Have you ever seen the like Excel spreadsheet competitions? No. Oh man, they're wild. I mean, I'm sure you use like Excel spreadsheets before, but they're like, oh, yeah. you know, they give them like data, like data, and they're like, okay, turn this into like a graph, and mm-hmm. they're like not without a mouse, and they're just like, like who can do like the quickest? It's absolutely insane. My wife could give them a run for their money. She's Ooh, a I love. There you go. There you yeah. go. That's something. Watch it on YouTube. It's all right. It's amazing. Okay. So I bought a pair of Jordans off of Timu. I'm not sure if they're legit though. I can <laughs> probably tell you that they're not. So the new style of rolling the controller is nuts. Yeah, that's what I'm, they're like. They're like click it or roll their fingers on it, and it like will turn the shape and drop it down. It's it's wild. See, I'm but, old um, school. I, I remember putting a quarter onto the arcade machine that you're next, and, and you do tournaments like Street Fighter back then. Uh, have you ever seen the movie? Um, it's like a documentary called The King of Kong. No, I have not. Oh, I think it's on Netflix. It's okay. it's uh, about um, two guys uh, beating the record for Donkey Kong, the original Donkey Kong. Oh. Yeah, and they have to do it in like in a, like the arcade cabinet, right? Yeah. And then there was one guy that like grew up playing Donkey Kong and he knew he can beat it. And like, there was a point of the game where like the game crashes cause you're not supposed to get past like that point. And that's when the game like actually ends. And so like the points accumulate. And by that time, that's when they all like count out the points. But anyways, the guy that originally held the record, he's like a big douchebag. Right. And then this new guy beats him it took like 20 years to beat this guy's record and the old guy beats it like the next day, which is crazy. And then, so long story short, the guy, the douchebag guy had a cabinet that he like messed with the internals yeah, to like give him a better, better score after a while. And he got disqualified. It was a big mess. There was like legal things, the documentary is fantastic. The King wow. of Kong. I highly recommend it. All right. I'll so, check it out. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see here. Fun games for sure. Sorry I missed your live, though. I will check it out sometimes tomorrow. I haven't listened to ABC Matt before. This guy is great. Ray has some great guests. There we go, Lisa. I'm telling you. you. I'm telling you. Up, up, down, down. Left, right, left, right. Yep. Select start. There we go. The Contra Code. Got to love yep. it. Got to love it. All right. Next up. Ping... For promoted listings on eBay, overrated or underrated, Matt? Ooh. Uh, I would say it's uh, underrated. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they, it, I know it hits their profit margin. I know that. But you know what? At least for me, you give coupons for all these buyers. They don't use them. They don't, mm. they don't, uh, they don't make your store grow. I mean, I hate to say it. I, I'm, I don't like to give more money to eBay, but... Unfortunately, you know, promoted listings work. Um, it's, there's no buts about it because there's more resellers out there. So what makes you shine over other resellers? You have to be on the top of the list. So you have to you have to pay a little bit to be on top of the list. Do you um, promote all your listings or certain ones that have like the um, sell through rate maybe a little slow or there's a lot of that that certain item? What does that look like? Um, so this goes back to my thinking again. So like, mm-hmm. um, I have a spreadsheet that itemize every single thing that I sell. I know mm-hmm. it's not advised to do that, 
But the reason why I do that is because I see items that are fast sellers and not fast sellers. So if I pick a redundancy of the item, I'll promote it because I, I need it to sell quick. But if I know it's going to sell really quick, I don't need to promote it. So it all de depends what item I'm selling. There you go. There you go. And you know that by the data that you have on your spreadsheet. Yeah. So I love it. I love it. Hey, Grams and Pops is saying, there you go, Matt. Underrated is the correct answer. I don't know. Um, Corey, let me know what percentage do you um, promote all your listings or not. Should I ask you that on Wednesday? All right. Last one here, uh, Matt. Marvel TV shows, overrated or underrated? It's overrated. Uh, I, I think I'm superhero out already. They just trying to. You're profit. done. They just profit so much off of Marvel. They just coming out with every little thing for it, and uh, I'm just tired of it. I, 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 it's and it, you even hear like actors interviews about doing Marvel movies, and they say you know there's not much acting involved. Like Robert Downey Jr., he just he's sick of it. He's like, there's not much acting. I mean, I'm practically am Tony Stark. Uh, there's no acting involved. It doesn't help his skill set. And, mm. and then for a viewer, for me, I'm like, I've seen this already. I read the comics. You're not doing it right. You're putting your own interpretation to it. Oh, it's, I'm, I'm like, I'm so over it. Oh yeah, I'm right there with you, man. Yeah. Especially like. The Loki show, I think, came out, like, way too late. Like, I think people are over it. Like, WandaVision was terrible. Yeah. Like, all these, like, Secret Invasion, like, it's they're all, like, not they're not good. Yeah. They're not good. They missed the boat. Like, after in, Endgame, it was like, they're done. Yeah. The movie yeah. industry is just running out of ideas. So, they just, yeah. they just want to grasp onto anything now or remake mm -hmm. other titles. What remake would you like to see, though? I don't want to see a remake. You don't want, I want to see a see, remake to anything. I want to see new, innovative ideas of things that haven't we haven't seen yet. We, you know, that's funny that you say that because uh, my wife and I we love going to the movies. Yeah. So a point that we make is like anything that is new, we make a point to go and see it because they know if if you want to see something new, you got to pay money for it. Oh, you yeah. know, so they can see. You know, like we saw. Oppenheimer, we're fixing to go see the new Leo movie. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but um, and then yeah, although every, anything new that we think that's needs a little bump, we'll go and see it because we want new ideas like the creator, that new sci fi oh, yeah. movie, yeah, like all, all that, all that. We got to make sure because man, I love going to the movies, that's like my favorite thing to do is going yeah. to the movies. I remember going. I remember my dad taking me to go see Casino when I was a kid. Wow! I know, right? Was that advisable? Uh, no, it was like, yeah. what am I watching? You know. Yeah. But it was like that was like, because me and my dad would always go to the movies. Yeah. He was, you know, he would get off work and like, you want to go see a movie? And I would go with him every time. Save your Private Ryan, the oh, first, yeah. scene, you know. And I'm like, what the crap is going on in this movie? You know. But awesome. I remember when I. Transformers movie that was emotional. I'm like, oh my favorite. The first, the new or the the old school one. The old school, like the cartoon one. Yeah, yeah. I was like, all my Autobots, they're all dying left and right. Yeah, like, right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Um, Ken is saying yes. Lisa, ABC Matt is the best. Had the pleasure of meeting him in Las Vegas. Okay, yep. you got to meet the elusive um, Mr. Bill, huh? Yeah, I have his autographed photo too. <laughs> sit, sit nicely to by your nightstand. I hope. Oh yeah, yeah. So, uh, Grams and Pops is saying we promote it. Recommend uh, a minimum two with ten minimum minus two with ten percent cap, pretty much on everything. Okay, okay. A remake of Howard the Duck could be cool. Interesting. Okay. I just saw they're coming out with a new Toxic Avenger. Oh. <laughs> right. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, we'll see how that goes for sure. So that sounds expensive. Yeah, did you go see Umpenheimer? At, yeah, heck yeah, I did. Heck yeah, I did. I bought like right when they announced it. They I bought the the movie tickets because you could not get one. Yeah, IMAX, the real IMAX. Oh man, it was. I did Barbenheimer. 
I just saw Barbie and then I saw Oppenheimer. Yeah. Is there an IMAX in Portland? Like a legit yeah, IMAX? Is. Okay. Yes, there is. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah, Barbie, man. A lot of people, I love that movie. It was good. Oh, yeah. It was Better so than good. Expected. Yes, yes. My wife was like, this was a really good movie because you don't think of it like, like they brought, they like hit core, especially like if you're a woman, like yeah. they hit like, you know, so yes. Howard the duck was George Lucas's greatest movie. Hey, <laughs> take it easy now. Take it easy. <laughs> so, all right. So there you go, Matt. That concludes overrated, underrated. Thank you so much awesome. for answering those questions. Yeah, man. So let's move on to the next segment of the show. We have skip or flip. And this is a, this is a commutative skip or flip. So the people in the comments, in the comment section, let me know what you would do with these. So we're going to show you three different things that are recently sold on eBay. And you're going to let us know if you would skip it or flip it. Okay, Matt. And they're, okay. they're like obvious things. Like when I show you the soul comp, it's like obvious that you would pick it up or not pick it up. Yeah. Okay. It's not going to be like, you know, Okay. but uh, let us know in the chat guys, what you would do. So first one up here, Matt, and this is, this is something that I wanted to highlight. Um, because I don't think a lot of people know about this. This is a Nintendo Switch game. It's called Super Mario 3D All-Stars. It has three Mario games in one. Super Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy for the Nintendo Switch. So there is the back of it. And there's the inside. As you can see, there's the little Switch game. And there is another picture of the inside. So Matt, thoughts, process. What are we thinking about here? Uh, how much it is, and I definitely would pick it up because games do sell, uh, especially the Mario franchise. Everyone likes it, so uh, it all depends on the price on it. But I how would much will you be willing to pay for it? Um, probably five dollars. Five dollars, and yeah. how how much you would you expect it to sell for? I would say it would probably sell for about twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. So you would pick something up for five and hopefully make twenty dollars. Yeah. Okay. Now this is Matt. I do want to preface this. This is a Nintendo Switch game, so this is relatively a newer game. It's not like a GameCube game or Mario or a sixty four game or anything like that. So this could be in. This could be sitting in shelves at your local Target somewhere. What are your thoughts on that? I. I think um, I think it would sell. Um, I, you know, like Nintendo Switch, they do digital downloads now, but people actually want the cartridge. So I think yes. I think I think it would sell. Okay, okay. So you're willing to pay five? Hopefully, you're flipping it for twenty. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see what the chat has to say about this. We have Alan is here saying flip it. Excuse me. And then Ken is also flipping it. So, all right. So I'll Matt. Flip it. This Super Mario 3 All Star is recently sold on eBay for eighty two dollars. Wow! Wow! I didn't expect that. Yeah. So this is I. I did want to highlight this because this is something that you probably are able to find like at a garage sale or a state sale or in the near future. The price on this is only going to increase, and then you'll be able to find it at a yeah. garage sale or a thrift store. So this game, they're no longer making this game. Okay. This is a physical copy, and it has, again, the Super Mario World, Super Mario Galaxy, and um, what is that? Mario Sunshine. Yeah. So Super Mario 64 and Mario Sunshine, to be able to play it in HD, you have to have this game. So that's one of the reasons why I think it might be worth a lot of money. So there you go, Matt. One for yeah. one. But $82 is a little more than what you expected, right? Oh, yeah. Because I see three games in there, and normally you only see one individual game. On yeah, the yeah. So yeah. I thought it was decreased the value a little bit because you have three games on it. But you, know what, you know what's funny about this game too, Matt, is that when people when it was released, I think maybe like two years ago, people said, hey, make sure you pick this up. Make sure that you pick this up. It could be worth something money down the road. Yep. And they were just sitting on shelves sitting on shelves like tons and then finally they just went away and then now the price is going up because people figured out hey i can play these games on my nintendo switch handheld or on my big screen yeah because 
Yeah. So really cool. Really cool. So wow. next one up, Matt on skip or flip. Since you're a nineties baby. Oh, this is a terrible picture. Let's see here. <laughs> Oh, this is a terrible picture. Let me find a new one. Let me find okay. a new one here. Sorry. Uh... Sorry for the delay. Talk amongst each other in the chat, guys. Talk amongst each other in the chat. So here we go. All right. Let me pull up. I got it. I got a good one here, Matt. For okay. You. Okay. All right. All right. I think this was the original. No, that's... that's not a good we one. We could either. just call it the original. <laughs> the original? Yeah, this is the here we go all right next one up guys this is a dvd do you sell a lot of media i do a little bit i okay. dabble a little bit. all right so this is daria the complete series on dvd there's the back and here is the front so mtv show did you ever watch a daria on mtv matt i have not but i know there's a good following for it Yes, yes. So Daria, the complete animated series on DVD. Let me know, guys, in the chat what you would do. Um, so I'll what are your thoughts? You flipping? Yeah. I'll what are we? It. What are we working? What are we working with price wise, Matt? I'm not paying more than a dollar or two for it because okay. I feel like it's not going to sell. Uh, it will sell fast, but you're not going to get too much for it. Okay. What do you think? It's not. This one is not sealed, Ken. It is pre-owned. So. Uh, what do you think? What do you expect to make out of it? I'm hoping to get ten. I I think I will get low ball into eight to nine dollar territory. So okay. I would probably only spend about dollar. So you're being it. you're being super realistic here. You see a DVD, yeah. you're paying no more than three dollars for it, and hopefully you're yeah. you're making like five bucks. Yeah. After fees, okay, all right. Yeah. So you're picking it up. You're picking it up in that premise, but you think that this is high dollar? Over it was so $100? quick. It was so quick, but you're not gonna you're not gonna go, go rich off of it. Okay, okay, nice, nice. Ken is saying he's skipping, so let's see here. So this Daria DVD recently sold on eBay for fourteen ninety. So you're right on the ball on that there. Yep. So no 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 tricking you, Matt. No tricking <laughs> you today. So all right, next one here, Matt. Next one here we have here. This is a good one. What do you? What about t-shirts? You're into t-shirts. Starting to get into t-shirts. Okay. So here we have a nice little t-shirt here. It says Runway Brain on the front of the t-shirt. Mm-hmm. I can't tell if it's single stitch or not. Okay. I would say no. Yeah, I it looks modern. I can't really, yeah. So there's the front. For the people listening at home, it has a Mickey Mouse on the front, but it looks like it's a werewolf Mickey Mouse. So there's the back. has a nice little, um, I don't know, would you like computer graphics of Mickey Mouse on the back? And there, they're just showing you various pictures of the back, all the seams, and the pit to pit, 22 the neck holes man this guy did his research and put some oh, nice yeah. pictures in here so thoughts matt i would i would flip it only for yeah. the fact that it's halloween-esque and people like horror and you also get the disney people who are fanatics with disney so you get the best of both worlds uh i won't pay too much for this maybe a couple of dollars i feel like it will sell anywhere from as little to eight dollars to as much as maybe fifteen dollars. Okay, okay. So you're picking it up. Yeah, I'm picking it up. Okay, all right. Oh, Let's what size here. is it? Oh, great question. It is a. I think that's the only thing that they don't show with the pictures. Okay. Because if it's it shows super... it in the it's a large. Sorry. It's a large. All right, I definitely mm. would pick it up. Yeah, it's a large. All right. So, all right, all right. Let's see what the chat is saying. So you're picking it up. Yeah, I'm picking. Hopefully it up. Hopefully, you're making how much? Uh, at least at least eight dollars off of it. Okay, okay. So you're be- again, you're being real realistic here. So yeah. Chris saying, "Run the shirt." He says, "Can can we see the tag?" Sure can. There's the tag right there. And then Alan is saying, "Flip." 
If it's crazy weird band shirt, get it. Okay. Love that tee. Probably way more money flip. Flip that shirt. Okay. So Matt's flipping. So this shirt, this crazy Mickey Mouse shirt, recently sold on eBay for $149. Ooh. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Crazy, right? Yeah. So I'm right. Matt, I don't, yes. So I don't know if you know this, but there is a Disney short called Runaway Brain mm-hmm. where Mickey Mouse turns like into a, like a evil Mickey like werewolf thing. And wow. any any merch from this short is like super sought after from the Disney collectors. Because, ah. I mean, it's like Mickey Mouse, like, it, like crazy. Like, look at this. Wow. So, it's called Runaway Brain. That's the name of the Disney short. Mm-hmm. And, again, any merch, Runaway Brain is a must cop. Because, wow. like, it's, it's easy to, like, pick out, too, because it's, like, it's Mickey you know, like insane looking Mickey, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I didn't see on the shirt. Was it, was it like specific, like Disneyland or Disney world or it didn't, it didn't have that. Um, cause I feel like, like one theme park over another sells better. Let's see here. Um, I'm reading. I don't think it says it. Okay. Yeah. I was just reading the description and it does not say it. Okay. So I'll give you a little check this out though. I just put in runaway brain on eBay. Look mm-hmm. at this. 189. This toy is 236. This t-shirt 180, 225, wow. 314. Look at this. Cereal 419. That's five thousand dollars. Wow. Let's check out the soul comps. That's Look insane. at this, 150 bucks. One thousand. Look at this, Ooh. glow in the dark. Wow. That That's this crazy. this short released in '95. Wow. That's crazy. That just opened you, my eyes. Disney Store X, XL. That's a good size too. Yeah. Would you buy this for a thousand dollars? No, 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 absolutely not. Could you imagine finding that? I know. And you and most people underestimate it and like, all right, I'm just gonna like my thinking, you only gonna make about in the teens and you see the comps and you go, Wow. Yeah, crazy. So there you go, guys. Mickey Mouse, runaway brain, super easy to spot. I mean, look at this plush. One seventy eight. That's crazy. Ooh, someone got a deal. Oh, this is another that's the same shirt. Someone got a deal. I wonder if they bought this shirt and put it back on eBay. Yeah. You know, $400, $500. There you go, guys. You, what are your thoughts on that, Matt? My mind's blown. I mean, this I didn't realize this is going to be educational, but now I know to look for these. This is, what the, this is the segment of the show where we try to give you guys a little bit of, uh, a little bit of value here. Yeah. So, wow. yeah, now I know. And knowing's half the battle. That's what G.I. Joe taught me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, Matt, we're getting down into the nitty gritty. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank so I always me. like to ask um, our our guests about what your goals are for this following year. Something reselling wise and then something personal wise. Okay. That you have planned in the near future that you like to achieve, accomplish, or look to stride for? Um, so I like to keep expectations low. That way you don't get disappointed. Unfortunately. Oh, come on, Matt. You got to <laughs> shoot for the stars, my friend. <laughs> so, I mean, as a YouTuber, I mean, the first 1K is so hard, right? And my objective is just to push, push out more, do more YouTube shorts, do more long videos, trying to get to that 1k uh, uh, subscribers Um, so that was my short-term goal just to get to that milestone my long-term 
for the channel. I want to put more spin to it. Um, I have many thoughts. I just have to put it in, into paper and have a direction. Um, I can't discuss it too much yet because I have a lot of thoughts in my head, but I want to put something in there to put a little spin to it. Um, personal wise, um, right now I'm just hyped up about my cruise. There's a Comic Con on the cruise. Yeah, um, that sounds fun. It's, it's the last Caribbean island that I haven't been to. Uh, so Turks and Caicos. And I want to go there. I want to deck out in the Iron Man suit and see what people think. Um, and then after that, I want to travel more. I want to take my wife to countries that I've been to that she hasn't. She, she has a lot of catching up to do. So hopefully we travel a little bit more. That's awesome, man. That's yeah. awesome. So just cruising or just any, any kind of travel? Any kind of travel. Uh, the cruising might put a kibosh to it after this coming one because it's getting expensive and you could do a couple countries with the amount you spend on a cruise. Ooh, um, but, okay. I've never been on a cruise, so I wouldn't even know what it costs. Uh, I, I would say, like, if you're doing a regular cruise, it's fine. But mine's a mm -hmm. charter, charter cruise, so it's all nerds and geeks. Even the entertainment Oof. is all geeks. So it's a little <laughs> bit more pricey. Yeah. Uh, a, little, a little more pricey. But uh, you should do a cruise, uh, especially the Caribbean islands, because you get an intro to every single island. And, and then okay. you can make a full trip out of it. But there's no thinking involved. You, you have no internet access. You do a full reset on your body, and you, you get to eat as much as you want. You drink as much as you want. There's no thinking involved. If you have kids, they could go on the cruise ship. They could be independent because you know they, they're somewhere on the ship. So yeah. they have the independency too. Okay. I like it. I like it. Well, guys, make sure you subscribe to Matt's channel, ABC Matt. The links are listed down below. So uh, anything else for the people, Matt? Um. Thank you for watching this this uh, the stream. I I, I want to thank Ray for having me. Uh, it's been fun. I hope to do more of this, and I hope to bring out more content for you guys and yeah. show you everything I have. Awesome. Well, again, again, guys, make sure you follow Matt on his YouTube channel ABC Matt, and follow him on Instagram ABC Matt. His link tree is linked down in the description below, so check that out for sure. So, guys, my name is Ray. What's your name, Matt? Uh, uh, Matt, ABC Matt. Matt. <laughs> there you go. And we'll yeah. catch you guys on the flip side. See, see ya. Bye, guys. Take care.